Hello, I want to show you how to use my fur texture or fur brush. It's a mixture of a brush and a filter, which work together to create really interesting transitions between colors and just overlay good texture of fur onto your model. To get started, I made a smart material of fur. So you can just search for fur and get the first smart material in here and just drop that into your project. If you now have it in, you have three stages of it. You have the base layer, which is just the data. It does have opacity of 0% in all channels. That's so it doesn't affect anything. You only get the data of the fur brush in there, but it's, get, it's getting applied somewhere else. Or in there, you ha we have um, an anchor point. We can see it's getting referenced throughout the layers. And it's just like a reference point saying, use this data here. The base color is like the second stage, the color channels. The base color just gives one color. And then we just have multiple fill layers defining the colors and some masks behind them. So it's just a black mask and a Fermix filter. The Fermix filters has some settings and references the fur draw layer, the base color of it, to apply some modifications to a mask we're gonna draw later. And in the top layer, we have the actual modifier of the mesh. So this is the um, layer actually adding all the stuff. So we have a fill layer in there and referencing the anchor point down here, which then actually adding all the height and everything. The important thing is the base color channel is set to multiply. That will mean that it takes all the colors beneath it and will only shade it. The fur brush itself is white and just shades a small amount of color. So this will not modify the colors and just shading them, making it a bit darker and brighter to get the fur texture into them. Well, let's get started with the fur draw layer. We need to grab the fur base material we imported earlier. So get the fur again. No. And we have the fur effect brush. So if we select the fur brush, we get all the channels. Make sure you have the height all also enabled in your app. So color, height, roughness, and metal. These are the four textual channels modified by this brush. So we select the, just the draw layer, select the material, the base material, and gets applied to your brush, a brush. Now we have to modify some values in it to get it usable. So the size we can just modify, let it modify by a drawing tablet. The flow should always be 100%, also the opacity. Don't put them down. They, we want the brush to replace um, whatever's on the layer already. Um, if you don't do that, it's getting messy. A feature of Substance Painter, we want to enable the follow path, which means if you draw, it's going to follow the um, movement of your mouse. The angle should be zero percent, uh, should be zero, this should be okay. Normally, tangent warp and object are enabled and should be enabled to make it not look bad. I use soft, the soft alpha shape, and make it not that hard. You can play around with it, but if you pull it to, hun uh, to the full hardness, it looks really weird. So just pull it down to zero or just a bit in between. So if we now brush, we see the texture is just repeating itself and it doesn't really look good. Um, to improve that, we can just select um, the random per stamp in the dynamic track settings. So now Substance Painter will go on and just create a unique brush pattern for each stamp it puts down. So even if you have symmetry nailed, it's gonna be a different stamp here to here. This is more work for the PC, so expect more lag from painting in this way, but it improves your symmetry looking and your whole brush texture by far, because it doesn't look repeating at all, because it's random each time you stroke. This brings it down to the fur, the actual settings on the fur pa panel. I'll show you the fur category first, which is the straightness at first. If you pull it all up, this fur will just almost be completely straight all the time. 
and just having a tiny bit of variance everywhere, but it's still gonna be straight. If I turn it down, it's gonna get more wild. It's gonna um, randomly brush in directions, in all directions it can. Which is also affected by the straightness scatter. So if I turn this up, it's gonna make more, s the, the spots which uh, get directed in all directions are gonna get smaller and the whole fur will look more messy in general, which is even more visible if we now scale the texture up so it's more detailed everywhere. So each strain is now smaller and we see how the layers are affecting each other. So if I turn it even more, it's getting up. You're gonna see it's a lot of small spots. If I turn it down, I'm gonna see some spots just brushing out of direction. But the spots will be bigger. Let's keep it up at like 80% to make it a bit messy, but not too much and keep this at around 3. And the scale, I'll want it a bit down to, uh, because this model looks a bit more toony, so I'll take the fur brush a bit down and make it more toony style by having just bigger strains of fur. The height layer, like the height slider, just modifies the height, so if I turn it up, the extremeness of the height will be more. I'll just turn it down to make it almost none. I'll just keep it at some layer. The next are the shadows and the shading, which will define how strong the darkness of the layers will be, so you can turn the shadows up or almost remove them. So it defines how strong the shadows and the opacity and everything on the um, first drains will be. You notice I have a saturation and hue. That's because a bit the model will shade the dark spots a bit. So if I turn the saturation up, I can now change the hue and the color which the shadows of the fur are gonna get um, modified to. It's applying, it's making the, co the base color green and turn it up. If I turn the saturation now a bit down, you can see just adding slightly green shadows but not really turning it green. You can just turn it down if you don't want that, or make it something brownish, yellowy, whatever kind of fur uh, you're using, to make it look as the light has kind of shadows and the base color looks a bit different than everything else. So you're gonna, gonna start and just paint a bit. So um, the next one will be the hair. You can modify how thick each single hair will be. So turning it up will make the fur wider. And turning down the length will, yeah, make it shorter. So if you're combining making it wider but shorter, we will get more spots everywhere. So we can turn up the scale a bit to make the fur a bit thicker again. So the dark spots will be less frequent and smaller. And just play around with it and find the fur texture you want. I want a few darker spots so I get the scale a bit down. I want them long enough but wide. So for coloring in the fur, we are going into the mask of the color channel we want to modify. And then just grab a paintbrush and make it soft. Full brightness and just turn down the flow to really low values. It's normally about 10 or less percent. So if we now paint a few times, you can see we're just adding really refined color. Just by adding and removing we can start making the layers and the borders look how we want to do. Because we are having such a fine brush we can brush over it multiple times and really define the colors we want or just having some regions just just sparking out of it. So, but now we want a second color for that. I'll just add a black mask. Let's say we didn't run this already. So, if you want to add colors, you are just making a black mask in the fill layer without anything else except the color. And we add a filter to this mask. In the filter, we want to select the mixer. 
and select the one I recently updated. This is this one. In the filter, we want to select the data layer we are drawing on, like the third draw layer. That's important, so we are referencing the color so it doesn't so it's actually using the, the data we are adding here. If we now start to draw, just make it quite strong and just paint in it, we can see it doesn't really look good. That's because we have to tweak all the data in here to fit for the current settings of the fur brush or the layer we are referencing. So for that, we are just starting with the pattern peak, work us from the bottom below, find the point where this transition is happening and just trying to get a level of how we want it to look. The hardness will make it like more blocky. You can now see the pixels actually getting on or off. So turn down your heart. You, you most, most of the time you want to turn down the hardness and the peak a bit and then find the region where your border is looking good. If you go up to the first trench, this is removing the border we are selecting on the whole layer and making it stronger so you can also just select the peaks or make the borders a bit softer or less strong. If you are turning it up and uh, we like the borders but we also see like these spots peeking through everywhere, we can turn down the color clipping. This tells Substance that these spots should still be the full brightness of this color layer instead of peeking through the color beneath it. This comes to the cost of the borders getting more and more um, pixely. So you most of the time want to have it rather high or as high as possible. But just for the um, test, we can also invert the borders, which will now normally in default mode, it's adding the current layer to the base of the fur. So peaking colors will peak, uh, so colors beneath it will peak over the end of first strains. But sometimes you just want this layer to be on the peaks, so you can invert the layer, now making it a bit stronger. So just toy around with it. It's, this now gets a bit less intuitive. I make the bit work. So if we now go in and now remove some of the mask of it. So get it dark, get it really low opacity. We can now just paint in spots, like just, just paint in highlights of the fur. So if you paint now, you're gonna add in just peaks. Gonna look a bit weird because it's making a darker color on the bright background. So let's try to turn it right and you can see what I mean. And make them bigger or smaller depending on how strong you paint on it. So if you just want it a bit, just turn it highlights. You can make it really soft and just a tiny bit. Adding just small details to highlights all the base of your fur. And you can just invert it any time. So in some cases you have the problem of you paint it on areas like noses or the mouth. The way Substance Painter now handles it, it's adding the height data, it's always adding the height data instead of just writing over it, which means we now have to modify your other layers to reduce that. For that you can just use the folders uh, you use and turn them on the height channel, like normally you're on the base color, just change them to the height channel. And instead of the L dodge, like linear dodge, just set them on normal and they're gonna replace and write over the data you're using. So your folders now will overwrite the fur data and you can just ignore it. That's the whole texture. Have fun painting.